All right, guys, we're at the Toad Lake store. Welcome to another episode of the Belly Up Podcast. Charlie and I and Jake and Tyler all put 20 bucks into pull tabs. We're going to win big, boys. Winning big. Let's go. Okay. Little pull tab invest- vesting to start off the day. Nice. We're still alive, Get Charlie. Get two more pulls, baby. I like that. that you know what? This is all part of the investing strategy. You put 80 bucks in, and you win yeah. eight back. About a 10% return, you know? I got to get me a, I got to get me a big old, uh, I want to get a, Miles, what if we open a bar? <laughs> what if you and I open a bar and there there was a whole wall of different pull tabs? Could you imagine it, Miles? Charlie. Do you want to run and manage a bar? Oh, no, no, no. That's where you come in, Miles. <laughs> I want to show up like once or twice a week and just collect money and have a beer, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so you, you figure everything else out. Okay. I'll have my guys do it. Yeah. A bar sounds good. A bar, it's like, yeah, I want to have my own bar. You know. No, you don't. You you like the idea of having a bar more yeah, than you want oh, the bar. Thank you. Thank All right, you. here we go. All right. Big money. Nothing. All right, guys. Welcome back to another episode of the Belly Up Podcast. We just wisely invested you, eighty dollars in pull tabs and tell you what, it was fun. Sometimes yes. It's a future we had a good invest- time. It's a future investment, right? We had a good time. We didn't lose eighty bucks. We just gotta keep playing. And then we need to win more than anything. The investment is not complete until we have made more than the initial investment. Scared money don't make money, uh, Mm -mm. Charlie. Mm -mm. And you got it takes money to make money as well. You want to be safe? You're not going to be rich. (laughs) You might be broke, but you're not going to be rich. Would you rather be broke and tried or uh, just right in the middle and never try at all? Um, I'd rather be broken. Yeah. Um, well, guys, we got another good episode of the Belly Up podcast coming to you. We're going to take some callers. You ready to do it, Charlie? It's born ready, Miles. Let's do it. Welcome to the Belly Up podcast. Who are we talking to? Oh, no way. This is uh, Jonah. Jonas? Jonah. And then uh, Jonah. Jonah. Yeah, in the belly of the whale. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Jonah, how many Back. days? How many days was Jonah in the belly of the whale? He was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights. Three days and three nights. You bet your ass he was. Okay. Have you read that Bible story recently? He lived it. Oh yeah, I have. I'm uh, very familiar with it. I like it. I like it. I like well, it. why don't you belly, belly of up. the whale up to the bar with us? <laughs> Us, it's on your mind. <laughs> Jonah. Jonah called right, the on, Bellied second, Up Podcast. That is that is ironic. There's something there, Jonah. What's cooking, <laughs> my guy? What's on your uh what's on your mind, huh? All right. So uh about a half a year ago, I uh played my first set of pull tabs. Congratulations. Popped your and, uh, uh popped your pull tab cherry, I hear. <laughs> yep, you bet. So uh I was with a bunch of buddies. We we're down well, we were fishing. Uh the fish were not biting. So what do you do when the fish are not biting? Drink. Go to the bar. Yeah. So we went over to the little local moose lodge and uh I saw that okay, machine machine oof, machine. And uh I woke up, I put forty dollars in. I got 40 and just for, you know, shits and giggles, I gave five each to each of my buddies and I won like 10 bucks in my big pile. And one of my other buddies, he starts dancing and, uh, I had never seen him dance. So we looked over at him and he's all, I won 250. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm the one that gave it to you. Okay. Oh, and this I'm is, like, oh, I'm a good buddy. Yeah, this is a situation you're in because you put the money in, but you made it seem like a donation to your buddy. Is that correct? Correct. Now, 
he ended up at the end of the night, all my buddies paid for all, everything, right? And I paid my share. And then all of a sudden we're walking in the parking lot and they throw, well, in all, we won 275 for the $40, but uh, they threw their 280 bucks at me. And they're like, it's all yours, kid. It's your first pull tab. See, they were pull tab, uh, you know, veterans. So they said all the money was mine. But in my heart, it's like, ah, did I actually win it? I don't know. Okay. Well, I, that went a totally different direction than I thought it was. I actually think your buddies, that's a classic prank by them. You thought that they were going to you know, keep the monkey money. They gave it to you at the end of the night. I think that's the right way to do it. I don't think you have anything to be worried about. Do you if, think that's the right way to do it? They didn't put any money in, Charlie. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter at all. He gave them a gift. But even if what was so, he would. They, usually if it's a group of people, you split the money anyway. So he at least should have came out with... I don't think that's, that's the 70 rule. 70 bucks. That's not a hard and fast rule, Miles. Hang on. I'm just fixing my little audio over here. Okay, listen, telling you this right now. (laughs) Jonah should have known better. Jonah, you should have known better. You can't be a a, a taker backer, can you? I won't. I didn't want it. I just, I was like, you you want it? You keep it, whatever. I paid my share, you know, for the tab, which is not a lot, which is pretty crazy. But I drank a lot of beer that night, and it really wasn't that much. Yeah. But, uh. So yeah. I got a technical question for you. Did when you put your 40 bucks in, did you ask them if they wanted to go in with you and did they decline or was there no ask involved? No, there was no ask. I walked over, I put my 40 bucks in and I just handed them five each. God, Jonah, that is a rookie mistake. Yeah. If you are with a group of people and you're going to do pull tabs, you at least got to ask if they want to go in with you. This, you know, I should have, because I've been listening to you guys for a long time. That's lesson number one in this scenario. It's a rookie move, but Jonah, you're new to pull tabs, and you do not have pull tab 101. Miles, what are the most important rules of pull tabs? Well, I, that, number one, I just laid out, right? It's I need to hear it twice okay. for it to register. <laughs> well, you hit it home. Yeah. If you are going to buy pull tabs, you first need to make sure that the table doesn't want to go in with you. In other words, if you're going to buy pull tabs, you need to ask if anyone else wants to buy pull tabs with you and it becomes a group effort that way. If not, then you can move on from there. Number two, right. number two, I mean, this is just becomes a, you know, classic transaction of you put 20 in, another guy puts 40, another guy puts 60, you divide up any of your winnings based off of the percentage in my mind. I don't know how you feel about that. Charlie, some people may split it down the middle, but I would say go off percentages. You know, you're getting way too in the weeds in the math for me, Miles. Here's how I think. Yeah, you know, I was going to say, I'm, I'm not really great at math there. I'm a welder, so, you know, I weld, you know, I breathe in a lot of fumes and my brain kind of fried. Exactly. So, you got to keep it you know, simple for a Miles. And the way I'm, I play pull tabs is board is board. If you give that pull tab away... That's their money. And if you pull it yourself, that's your money. So it's, it'd be like if you hand it to them, it's handing them anywhere between $0 and $777. Well, that's just wrong. That's not if wrong. It, if it's a group effort, you just, just divide the money up, the winnings. I mean, that's how it goes. Would you agree, Jake? What do you mean that's, that's how it goes? Is that how it goes everywhere? I think so. I mean, it only seems fair, right? Kind of take some of the fun out of well, it. Well, then why though. don't they well, just? Yeah. Well, no, that's the fun part is you all win. Now I, it's, a, it's a group win. Yeah, I'm kind of torn now because I didn't realize heart, Miles was know, a my, communist. My heart, I want. <laughs> you all put money in. <laughs> what? <laughs> you all put money in. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You I, you risk the dough, you get to take home the winnings. All know? right, all right. Th- this should be a, a kids' book, you know, about sharing. Yeah. You know? I think the other thing to keep in mind is if you do go to a pull tab investment center, as I like to call them, uh, the PTICs, PTIC. you, you go to a PTIC, PTIC and there PTIC. is a person with a box that you buy the pull tabs from a person. If you do win, make sure you tip that pull tab uh, 
attendant at the thing. You, you make sure you, you, you're taking care of the people that are taking care of you. That I agree with. Now, what if the bartender uh, All right. gives it gives it a, a little something extra? You know, yeah, like we just had a little uh, titty rub is what you're saying. Our bartender did a titty for rub luck. on the pull tab for luck. I would say you got to do well, one, you're going to tip them anyways for being the bartender and then give them a little off the top, you know. Nice choice of words, Miles. <laughs> nice choice of words. All right. That's so, good to know. Good um, to know. Yes. I think another good savvy move next time you're at the bar for your pull tab investing is if you do get a winner. And they're the cardboard ones. Make sure you pull off the tabs so they're not just hanging off of the cardboard. So then you know that that specific one is a winner and you can pile those up and you know that. You, that yeah, you we did that. We, we, we pulled a little cardboard off. We, you know, we put like the six winners out of who yep. knows how many by the end of the night we pulled. Great. And then uh, we took a picture of the pile of the losers, you know? Yeah, uh, oh, that's it. <laughs> there you go. Oh, my parents. You got to make sure you're, <laughs> you're you're taking a photo of all the stuff you didn't win. Um, yeah, the old lady wasn't wasn't too happy at the picture until well, I told her how much you, I won. You, you know, don't, or we won, or yeah. So I I, I think that uh, a lot of times you got to keep in mind that pull tab investing is a group environment. It's a group sport, is what it is. I, I mean, I, I like it. I like it. It's just not the way I, I've I've been playing it, you know, and maybe I've been wrong. You ever you ever have a realization that you're just operating life the way you think is standard and then you realize you're, you're kind of a jerk face? Yeah, I think this is that moment for you. I Charlie. think it is. I think it is. I also think my sister has screwed me out of a lot of money. <laughs> and so I'm OK. A there it is. <laughs> a little bit. Pissed oh, well, off. you know, I guess I'll. All sisters are the same, you know, a little bit. To a degree. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. To a degree. To a degree. So what did you do with your winnings? All right. Uh, it actually turned out good. Uh, my, my grandpa uh, he wasn't doing too well, so I bought a plane ticket out to California to see him. Oh, so, uh, my God. It worked out great. Is... And, he's, and, and he's still alive and kicking. I mean, this dude is 97 years old, going on 98, and – just when we thought he was going to kick the can, you know, he's fine. He's I love good. it. That is, that's why you so, do it. That's why you pull tab invest. Go see your 97 year old grandpa before he dies. Yeah. Folks, if you got grandparents oh, yeah. uh, around, make sure you see him on a, uh, on as, as regular of a basis as you can, you know, and mine them for all the information they got. They got some good, uh, good wisdom there. And, you know, also rookie oh, yeah. mistake, you should have taken that 270 or 80 bucks that you got. You should have reinvested and then you could have maybe paid for your grandpa's hospital bills, too. So that was, you well, know, I mean, I never said I didn't spend more than 250 bucks. I just said I used the money they gave me to get the ticket. You know? OK, all right. I like that. Um, but also <laughs> good on you for, uh, you know, a lot of people probably would take that money and go blow it on booze and a trip to the <laughs> casino or something. And and you said, Hey, I want to go see, uh, grand pops. You know, yeah. I like that. Hey, You're good guy. What's your grandpa's name? Uh, his name's Gerard. Uh, grandpa uh, Gerard a farmer ever since the, uh, yeah. Grandpa Gerard. I imagine Grandpa Gerard, if you asked him, how do you live to be 97? He's like, I just drink beer every day. Oh, similar. He, uh, he makes Armenian style moonshine and we've been, uh, he's been making it in our family for generations. So, uh, he takes a shot of that in the morning and a shot of it at night every day. So. <laughs> I told Miles, you. Miles. I knew it. I, yeah. I, I, you know, I wasn't sure on that one, Miles, <laughs> but he, he, he saw your beer and raised you two shots of moonshine, Grandpa Ar Gerard Armenian did. Armenian moonshine? Is Armenian that? moonshine. He's Armenian yeah. then? So, yeah, we're, I'm Armenian. We're all Armenian. That's actually an Armenian priest, which is pretty funny. An Armenian uh, priest? That's oh. kind of interesting. I never... Yeah. So... We're not Catholic, but we're Christian. But the Orthodox priests can get married, so that's that's how I'm here. You know, uh -huh. I get asked that a lot. Yeah, how, that makes sense. How's about it? That's great. So, are you going to carry on the yeah. moonshine tradition? Has he taught you how to make it, or are you going to be oh, a priest? Yeah, yeah he uh, 
no, I, I, I don't think I'm the right fit for a priest. Although, I do like going to church, you know, but yeah. I'm a welder, and uh, Grandpa taught me how to make it, and he's actually uh, given me great grandpa's still. Wow, and if that. the authorities are listening, um, it's uh, rubbing alcohol still. You know, we make uh, rubbing <laughs> alcohol for uh, wounds, you know? Uh, yeah. You never know these days who's listening. <laughs> That's true. You don't. You don't. Um, what is the secret ingredient to a uh, Armenian moonshine versus a normal moonshine? So uh, traditional, like Southern moonshine, it's uh, corn-based mash. Armenian moonshine, we call it rahi, and uh, that's the name of it. But it's a raisin-based mash. So Grandpa's a farmer. He grows grapes and he dries them into raisins out in the Central Valley in California. And uh, he just used whatever extra raisins he had laying around. And that's what their family's done for generations now. So every year he makes it a batch. And uh, the last batch we made, we made 22 gallons rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol, <laughs> yeah. For medical purposes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Medi- medical purposes. Yeah, you, medical purposes. Medicinal rubbing alcohol. You rub your gums with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's you know, actually pretty what, cool. Growing up. Yeah. I, it's, yeah, Grandpa's an awesome dude. I love you. Growing up what? I say, you know, growing up, and anytime I had a sore throat or, you know, a toothache or whatever, my, my parents would either rub it on my gums or I just take a shot of Rocky and it's that stuff's no joke. Uh, we got it up to 185 proof. So <laughs> what proof is this moonshine? Hey, 185. That's the highest we've gotten it up to. <sighs> wow. Is that like what your guys' game is, is how much, <laughs> how, what proof can we make this? Uh, yeah. No one's ever beaten grandpa. grandpa. He got it up to 195, but uh, <laughs> we've tried <laughs> I mean, was well, he a blind I mean, you're, man you're, by you're, any chance? But you're also running out of proof to even go no. up to. If I'm doing the math correctly, yeah, I that, don't think you can but have 110 percent alcohol. You know, at some point you're gonna. That's true. That's that's true. 100. percent That's why you know the higher you get up there, the harder it is to uh, get it higher. It's kind of like an exponentially uh, downward curve. So what? What? Again, my math is not so great. What is the key to getting a higher proof? Um, you can double distill it or you can even triple distill it. Depends. You know, great so, grandpa was known to do some wild stuff, you know, double, triple distilling it. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Well, <laughs> Charlie, I'd love to try some Armenian moonshine sometime, especially if it's 195 hey, if, proof. If you guys want some, you know, if I'm ever up in, you know, Fargo or, you know, up in uh, Wisconsin, I'll uh, I'll make sure I always have a gallon in my truck of rubbing alcohol for medicinal purposes. Well, I was going to say, I I on this podcast, I want to say that I don't want any illegal Armenian moonshine. I do not want to try it. So don't come no. to Fargo and do not drop some off. Okay. I yeah. Get out in no, front of not, that. Not at all. And if we text you an address, I know. Definitely do not send it in the mail so we yeah, can we're, well, definitely we're, not try it on the next episode of the Belly Up Podcast. And we're not going to send him an address, Charlie. No. Nope. We are not. No, not not at all. No. Okay. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm glad we uh, detailed all the things we're not going to do, and I'm uh, excited for what's about to come in the mail. <laughs> Not going to come in the mail. Not coming oh, yeah. in the mail. Right. <laughs> I'm excited to get no mail. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right, man. Well, we appreciate you calling in today. Kind of uh, a fascinating story. Your grandpa, wish him well. He sounds like a, a cool guy. And good on you uh, for investing your investment in going to see him. So uh, congrats on the win. And thanks for calling in today, man. All uh, right on, guys. We'll see ya. Have a good right. one. Thanks, Noah. Sounds good. Or Jonah. Yeah, I guess Sorry. I, I guess I better. <laughs> Screwing up my uh, Bible Noah, names. Noah, Jonah, you know. <laughs> Noah built same, the ark, same okay? Bible different. They both had you know, water. Same Bible different, yeah. you know, chapter. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Same Bible, different book. All right. <laughs> All right. You bet. Same be, Bible, different book. Be good, Jonah. All right, guys.
Charlie. Oh, that's loud in my ear. Charlie. No, just screaming there. What's going on, Charlie, Miles? it's time for you to start celebrating family time with Tippy Cow's vanilla soft serve right here. I Why tell has you it got to be vanilla, Miles? Because. Are you calling my family vanilla? Yeah, in the best way possible. Okay. Your family's delicious, just like the vanilla soft serve Tippy Cow. I like it. And hey. Don't be, think too much into that one. Okay? Yeah, don't yeah. overthink vanilla. Yeah, whether you're gathering with relatives or relaxing by the lake, Tippy Cow adds a nostalgic touch to your summer. Tippy Cow is the perfect companion for those memorable get-togethers. Perfect. Shoot it, shoot it at me, Charlie. What's <laughs> what's a memory? Oh, the family fourth get together, of, Fourth of July. You know, sitting there. Uh, 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 we see the wind was blowing toward <laughs> us, and, and the the fireworks, the the explosions of the thing that they were actually blowing onto people, and they were going ah. And then you know, ow, the, ow, the next God. the next morning, I picked all of it up with my grandpa in the yard and we took it over to the police station and he, he was getting pissed about it. it. It was fun. What a good that is an awesome nostalgic memory. Isn't Charlie. it great? And and Tippy Cow just brings that nostalgia out. So here's a toast, Charlie. Yes. Here's to family reunions and a glass of Tippy Cow vanilla saucer. May your gatherings be full of laughter, love and delicious treats. Cheers to making every moment with family a little bit sweeter. Cheers. Cheers. Tip it on back. Summer festivals and events are a blast, Miles. I, I would agree. I have a ton of fun. But not to be the pooper of the party, they can sometimes lead to unexpected accidents. Been there, done that, Charlie. I tell you what. Whether it's a food stand slip fitty doop or a festival fumbly oop, Nicolay Law is here to help you sort out any personal injury claims. Enjoy the end of the summer festivities, knowing that if you need the gal support, Nicolay Law is just a freaking phone call away, guys. Make the most of your summer events. Stay safe. With Nicolay Law, one eight five five Nicolay. Injured? Get Nicolay. Injured or no? Get Nicolay. Are you injured or no? Get Nicolay. <sighs> Welcome to the Belly Up Podcast. Who do we got on the phone? Uh, my name's Jeff. My name is Jeff. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> That's about right. Hey, you ever heard that one before? Uh, I've heard lots of things, yeah. Yeah, I've got a lot of names with a lot of people. <laughs> well, Jeff, belly up to the bar with us. Tell us what's on your mind. Oh, boys, I tell you what, I got a few things on my mind today. Well, the, uh, you called the right spot. Well, the first thing is I got a, I got a job interview in about an hour. Okay. What better job interview prep than bellying up to the bar with us? What kind of job are you about to uh, interview for? Um, I don't know. This is kind of a family program, but I'm interviewing to be a semen salesman. A uh, <laughs> semen salesman. Are you going to be a bull ejaculator? Or... And a couple steps down the line from that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll be the, I'll be the ejaculation deliverer. Okay, All right. So you're the handler. Now, Jeff, I got to tell you, what you are um, applying for here is some serious business. That bull semen is not cheap by any means. And the time it takes you to get it from point A to point B, you can blow the whole load. <laughs> all right. So you got to be on your game. You got to keep it refrigerated. And time is of the essence. I'm sure you're aware of all those things. You know, Charlie, I've got I've got a few years under my belt dealing with some semen. Okay. And, uh, okay. I, oh, there, yeah, yeah. That nitrogen level is really important. Mm hmm. So what? Uh, well, one, it sounds like you got some years under your belt, but how do you get qualified to handle semen? You know, I'll tell you, it takes a lot of trial and error. <laughs> Sometimes there's some slip ups. Sometimes there's some spills. Um, <laughs> But really, it just comes down to years of experience and, and knowledge of how to handle it. Yeah, it can be a sticky situation, I've heard. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, make it milk's a dirty business sometimes. That's true. That's true. <clears throat> All right, Jeff. Uh, we are we are gonna run you through a mock uh, a mock interview session. Miles and I are hiring you uh, as the uh, semen salesman. Okay, we doing good cop, bad cop. Good Perfect. cop, bad cop. Are you good cop or am I good cop? Um, you're good cop. Okay. Well, Jeff, we appreciate you coming in to the interview today. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing real good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. You know, I'm not going to bull crap you. We are uh, looking for someone who's pretty good at handling semen. Do you think that you got what it takes? Oh, boys, I tell you, I know I got what it takes. I've been handling semen for over 10 years now. Ten, yeah. 10 years, you don't say. That's a long time. Someone saw, some people would call that a decade. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, to some to some yeah yeah that's for sure i even believe it or not i teach people how to handle semen in person okay we got a bit of a connoisseur here charlie what do you think jeff what do you mean you teach people how to handle semen what are you talking about are you certified to oh, do that I get lot- yeah yeah self-certified really um jeff are you jer- I get folks with are you jerking with me right <laughs> now huh uh, I'm not. I'll be honest with you. This is serious business, Jeff. Each one of those loads is worth somewhere north of two thousand dollars, depending on the load. Could be more. You think I'm here for fun and games? Yeah. yeah. I'm not here for fun and games, but uh, I tell you what, you get that sex semen, ninety percent chance of getting a female calf. You're talking double the price there. Uh, you can't be messing around with that. No, you can't. That's what I like to hear. Miles, next question. <laughs> well, one, I mean, you handled that perfectly. There's no way you don't get this job. Would you agree, Charlie? I uh, yeah. Well, be, Go ahead, Jeff. I'll be, I'll be honest with. You. I'm going in feeling uh, pretty good. I already I called one company before, kind of requested an interview with no job opening posted. Because I'll be honest, they got a. Make me a pretty good offer to leave what I'm doing now. So I mean, and it is tough to get an interview f- as a semen salesman because they usually hire internally. So um, it's good. It's good you've gotten to this point. You've got a reputation that precedes you. Um, Would you say that this job that you're interviewing for is maybe the climax of the industry or no? Uh, it's probably pre-climax. Okay. Yeah, so- probably pre more of a foreplay situation for those. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff, let's take a step back for a second. There's a lot of people listening to this kind of unsure what we're talking about. Just let them know why what you're doing is important and the various steps involved in bull ejaculation. <laughs> well, you see most of the dairy industry is uh, now relying on artificial insemination. Oh. And like I tell folks that come visit the dairy when I give tours, we, you know, they always ask how we get the cows pregnant. It's very important that we get the cows pregnant. And they say, where are the bulls? They say, we don't have any bulls because of safety and genetic progress and blah, blah, blah. And then I pause for a moment and I say, I'm the bull. <laughs> That's a <laughs> terrible BCology joke. I mean, I, you're whipping that joke out when? Oh, all the time. Oh, all the time. Yeah. When there's when there's fourth graders coming through, when there's elderly folks coming through, middle aged folks, all ages, all genders, all everybody. We're it's a diverse it's a diverse joke. And what uh, what's usually the response on a joke like that? Uh, usually a couple of giggles, and that's about it. Do you, do you have a personalized license plate that just says the bull on it? <laughs> I wish, but I can't shell out that kind of money. <laughs> what? Jeff, I thought you were rolling in it. Isn't isn't a uh, semen salesman making some good coin? Well, I don't know. I'm about to find out in this oh, interview. He's not a salesman right now. Well, what what's your oh, what's no. your your right now you're just an inseminator? Well, right now I'm managing a, a dairy farm, yeah. Oh, yep. you're managing the dairy farm. Got it. What is the top job in this in in the the field you're looking to get yeah, into? Is it the stroker? Is it the broker? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> probably the president and CEO of a semen company. <laughs> okay. Do you, do you have ambitions of climbing that ladder? Oh, heck no. Climbing that pole, rather? Uh, no, you don't. Well, what is your dream job, then, if it's not to sell bull semen? Well, I thought I my dream job was my current position. And, uh, you know, dreams fade. And so my backup is uh, looking at a semen salesman. Well, what didn't work out with this job you got going on right now? What changed your mind? You know, a lot of pressures, a lot of stress, on call 24-7, dealing with a lot of folks with this and that. And, you know, yeah. how it goes. with great power comes great responsibility. I think you're finding that out, huh? Yeah, I'd like a little less and a little bit more money. Yeah, I mean that so, makes sense. How high do you want to climb on uh, on uh, on this job pole? Uh, not not too high, not too high, not so too high. You're you you this could this do you still have a dream job in this industry, Jeff? We're trying to get your or is your dream just to work, make that bag, and then go home and enjoy life? Are you working to live or living yeah. to work? Uh, right now, a little bit of both. Yeah, right now a little bit of both. All right, now, I'd like a little bit less work. Yeah, yeah, Jeff, tell me this: Are you single? You in a relationship? What's that status? Oh, boys, I tell you, what, I'm in the happiest relationship I've ever been in in my life, and I kind of want to get your guys' input on something. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Glad I asked. What's going on, Jeff? Well, I met the most beautiful girl, the kindest girl. We've been together about a year and a half, year and a couple of days. And uh, I got, don't tell her, but I got a ring in the gun safe right now. You got a ring in the gun safe. Okay. You got to be kidding me. What kind of a ring did you get her? Well, it's named after her. If that helps. It's, it's a good one. It's a diamond ring. Her name's Diamond? Jeff, you know <laughs> my follow-up question. <laughs> Is she a good dancer? Oh, she, she, I step aside when the music comes on and just sit back and enjoy. Jeff, that wasn't the question he was asking. <laughs> Where did you meet her, She's Jeff? Some, I'll believe it or not, I'd like to thank Mark Zuckerberg for uh, Facebook dating. Okay. <laughs> Facebook you dating. You are the first person I've ever met that's seen <laughs> success with Facebook dating. So kudos to you. Yeah. Um her name's Diamond. That that is a very very uh unique unique name. Uh is she in theater at all? This is like Diamond a stage name or is that a real name? Well, Diamond's not actually her name, but uh <laughs> she is a pretty blonde. <laughs> she is a pretty blonde on a pretty Palomino horse and she runs rodeo. She oh, runs rodeo. Okay. What are you wondering about? <laughs> Well, I'm trying to figure out how to do it. I've, I've never done this before. Okay. So what? I wondered if you gotta, uh, you gotta, had any tips. You, I know Charlie's done it at least once. Miles, you've done it once. <laughs> yeah. Well, what are you thinking right off the bat? What is, what's what's your thought process? What do you think you want? How do you think you want to do it? Well, so she runs barrels. So they got the three barrels set up in the arena. Yep. So I'm kind of think breaking into – the local rodeo fairgrounds and setting up some barrels and walking around and, you know, kind of each barrel has a picture memories of each stage of our relationship. And then we walk it and talk and discuss and she probably cries and all that. And then we go back to the finish line and then I get down on a knee. That sounds I mean, that's beautiful. like the most well thought out proposal I've heard in a while. It, sounds, it really is, Jeff. That's well, like, from the heart. I don't, it's thinking about her. Um, I don't think you need any advice on that. I do you, Charlie? Zero credit for that. Jeff, I'm going to give you one alternative on this, okay? <laughs> I'd love to hear it. I take zero credit for that idea. I asked chat GPT. <laughs> Did you really? You asked Chat GPT. God, Jeff, I. You know what? All that right, ruins for, the whole yeah. thing. Don't tell her that. Forget that idea. It's trash. Here's what you do, Jeff. You make friends All with right, the ro step one. Make friends with the rodeo clowns. Okay. Now, now you got. I was thinking. I was thinking that too. Yeah. I was thinking that too, but I was was specifically told, don't do it during the rodeo. Well. <sighs> 
Yeah, that scraps your whole idea. Charlie. My idea was that he would make friends with the rodeo cons. He would get inside one of the barrels, you know, <laughs> and before she's at the last barrel, pop the top off the barrel and then pop the question and pop the question. But then he's like, he's one of them naked guys in the barrel, you know, yeah. so you get the suspenders on the barrel <laughs> yeah. and then you get down on one knee, you know, so the barrel drops down again. And then he says, will you marry me? But at that point, the barrel's shut, you know, so it's kind of cute. Anyways, she said, don't do it during the Charlie, rodeo. I think so much light and it's scary. What'd you say? I said, Charlie, it's kind of scary. I thought about that one a while ago. and uh, She kind of shut that down before I even said anything. Well, well, well <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, honestly, I think his plan's pretty good, Charlie. Really? You're going to give him the chat GPT plan? It is a good plan. That's kind of a, the unfortunate thing. I think thing. this is less about the idea and more about that you're freaked out that chat GPT came up with that good of an idea. I know. Yeah. Yeah. That's unfortunate. What is it she, is a different world. What does she think about your potential new job that you're interviewing for? Well, she's not exactly in the industry, so she doesn't totally understand it, but she respects my decision and knows we're doing it for the right reasons, you know, <laughs> trying to make a life together, trying to get something that works. So she's on board. Diamonds don't buy themselves. You got to get, you got to get that funding. And I think you got that liquid gold on your hands. So you just take advantage <laughs> of that. Hey, speaking of which, don't you have an interview coming up here soon? Yeah, I got about 40 minutes. So I, I'd like to, I'd like to offer some buy, sell and trade too. While I'm at it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it. Yeah. What 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 loads you got right. cooking? Well, I got two broke down John Deere lawnmowers. I got a broke down antique John Deere 730 diesel. I got a, a couple other broke down tractors and uh and a broke down four wheeler. Okay. Do you have anything that works? Um well, I do have a brand new to me. 32 year old Jacob mower with a 72 inch deck that I mow my lawn with. That oh, does work. Okay. 72 inch deck. Um, so what are you, what are you looking? Uh, it sounds like you're trying to get rid of your broken down equipment. Are you thinking trying to do this? Yeah. Is it a lot situation? Are you trying to do it individually? What are you asking for it? What's the thought? Hey, I'll, I'll trade for anything cool. I've tried offering it up for trade. I've been offered, computers and RC boats, uh, a lot of weird stuff, but, uh, cash is king really. So, so you're so just you want to sell. <laughs> you're looking so he to, wants to trade it for cash. <laughs> so that's what we call sell in this buy, sell and trade game. There. It'd, be a fair, it'd be a fair trade. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I trade it for some greenbacks. How much, what's your lowest offer? How low will you go? Boy, if they took, they took it as a lot that uh, one John Deere tractor is pretty valuable. But if you take the two mowers and the four wheeler, I'd probably do about 2000 on those. 2000 bucks. Okay. For a bunch of stuff that don't work. So you got to have 2000 bucks and a really big trailer. And, and a um, can do attitude yep. to get them working. <laughs> a can do attitude. And a not, probably a nice winch of some sort, just in case. Um, okay, and then oh, how about that other John Deere? What do you want for that? Uh, that's a $5,000 broke down tractor all day. Front end broke off one day. It rolled down the hill on me. <laughs> Does it come with the front end? Did you, were you able to retrieve it? Yeah, it's sitting next to it. Okay. Okay. Oh. Well. Where can they get a hold of you if they're looking for broke down equipment? Ah, uh, they could, uh, well, I don't have Instagram, but, uh. Check on Facebook Marketplace in uh, New York. Uh, just upstate in New, New York. Okay. If you are in upstate New York, check Facebook Marketplace. How about an email? You got one of those? Yeah. Yep. The bull. The uh, at... farm. Yep. Oh. Farm guy eh45 at yahoo.com. Okay. Farm guy eh45 at yahoo.com. All right, Jeff. I, I I had a feeling you were a Yahoo Mail guy, so good for yeah, you. Yeah, I didn't really want to. I didn't really want to give out my work email. No, that's smart. 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 He he just gave us the email he gives the hotel when he checks in. Yeah. So, 
Well, Jim, we thanks for calling in today. This was great. Good luck on your engagement. I think you got a good plan, and uh, we'll see if we can get that equipment sold for you. Yeah. Now go get this job, Jeff, and have a great life with Diamond. <laughs> thanks, guys. Miles, congratulations on the new baby. Thank Charlie, you, Charlie, good job on uh, building your brand and all that. Love you guys. <laughs> You're awesome. I listen every week. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate you. All right. Hey, watch out. You too now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, you're married to the game now. Charlie. Married to the game, baby. You like that? You like that hesitation? He's like, oh, God. Uh, let's <laughs> see. Uh, it's very Midwest uh, nice. Congrats of on the jokes, yeah. Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> doing, doing good there. Well, thank you, Jeff. Um, yeah, you know, I think uh, I think he'll get that job. Yeah. He's got a lot I think of he's going to be a good salesman, too. Yeah, he can certainly keep you chatting. You mm -hmm. know, and uh, maybe he'll sell some stuff and help pay off that ring he got. So, yeah. Charlie, you yeah, got, Miles, uh, you're on the road. I mean, I feel like you're always on the road. Yeah, I'm always on the road, Miles. You uh, got your comedy tour. Yeah. So good old fashioned tour. Uh, we got a new uh, we're kicking off the next leg of it starting in September, you know, at a couple summer shows, but yeah, we're going to be kind of all over the place. You know, this is the point miles. I wasn't expecting to talk about my tour. Let me just pull up some tour dates. Uh, you know, that's how it goes in this business. You, uh, you kind of say, yeah, no, that sounds like fun. That sounds like fun. And then you get to this point and you're like, wait, where was I playing again? Right. And while you look that up, Charlie, I just want to say, I've been to a few of your shows. Yes. You and have. I was pleasantly surprised. I had low expectations. I like that. You set and, the bar low. And you exceeded them to I the nth degree. And so kudos to you for putting on a show, even though no one thinks you can put on a good one. Thank you, Miles. And I really, um, I take that to heart because I know it's not easy getting a compliment out of you. So I'll take the <laughs> backhanded one uh, any day, really. But yeah, I'm going to be in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, starting okay. 912. I call that Fargo South. Fargo South. I like yeah. it. Yeah, it's the South Dakota in the bottom bunk. Um, then uh, Shakopee, Minnesota, Boston, Massachusetts, Portsmouth, Matt, New Hampshire, Bemidji. I'll be back up here in Minnesota doing Bemidji, Saginaw, Michigan, Van Wert, Ohio, do a whole Ohio run, Dayton, Columbus, York, Pennsylvania, going through the deal, and there's a bunch of other ones. Anyway. So you're going to Boston? Going to Boston. You Do you do any special jokes when you're in Boston? You don't have to give them away, but just is there an Shh. angle you try to go for? Well, well, kind of the deal is, yes, yeah. Every location I go to, ideally, I get there a little bit early. You go out on the town, you get a taste for the town. You kind of see what jokes pop up naturally. But a place like Boston, you know, you can easily do the differences of like East Coast versus the Midwest because it's a different vibe out there in Boston. I'm not yeah. sure if you know that they don't take uh, kind of the Midwest slow pace of life as uh, easily as, you know, someone say in, I guess, the Midwest. Can I would. make one request? What's that? When you're in Boston you must commit to that you're going to do this before i tell you what it is um okay i commit i need you to work in a tea party joke oh yeah yeah there, there's a good tea okay so that's fun like throwing the tea in the drink what's kind of the equivalent of that in the midwest like what do we what do we not like you know the 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 man getting on us for here what and what would we dump in like well you know I don't know. I don't know. It's, 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 on it's, you. A, it's, time. it's a good thing. That's a good thing, right? And you guys saw it right it's here. Good the, jumping the, off the point. Good creative process of the good. <laughs> I need moments. You and know, the guys. That's why it's so amazing. You can put on a good show because this is what he's clearly he can think on his feet super well. You know. Yeah, we got that. Miles, here's my question for you though. When I came to Fargo and I did stand up uh, over at the uh, Fargo Theater, mm -hmm. by the way, beautiful theater. Fargo is a heck of a place to do comedy. I'll say that right now. Mm -hmm. Always have fun shows there. But you got up on stage. You did a little number yourself. And I feel like there's a glimmer there that perhaps one day, you this, know, maybe this is you what would, he's always doing to me, Jerry. He's always trying to get me to do stand up. Venture into the fray. What do you think? I'm I'm I got a kid now, Charlie. Oh, did you have the kid so I would stop asking you to come on the road with <laughs> yep, me? Yep, that's the only reason why I had a kid so you could get off my back. Well, 
Yeah. So you got you got zero interest in that. What? What's? Did you like being on stage? It is fun, but I mean, to do a full hour of jokes, I just I don't think I could put it together. I only did like four minutes or something. Yeah. And that was even tough. So. Well, it starts with a joke at a time. Joke at a time. Um, for you, Miles. Well, I'm going to be out on the road this uh, this fall. What What do you have kind of uh, coming up? What's hot on your uh, agenda? Well, I'll probably go pheasant hunting this fall. Probably go deer hunting this fall. I got a wedding in Idaho. Oh, who's getting married? Old college buddy. What are you going to do out there when you're not doing the wedding thing? I don't know. Probably just look at the mountains. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just. I'm not going to go hiking. That's for sure. Yeah. You're not a hike guy. I'm more of a visual guy, you know, just look at mountains and uh, have a few beers and relax. All right. Call it a day. Well, that's Mm -hmm. nice. Okay. And then um, big, big, uh, you know, kind of family plans now that you got like a kid. I mean, do you, you babies are kind of doing their own thing. I don't know what, what age you get to start throwing a ball. At, uh, yeah, we'll probably August. we'll probably start we'll probably start throwing bullpen here this fall. Yeah, you think so? Warm up that think arm like a little. Three months is when you almost when you have to start them these days. Otherwise, there's otherwise they're behind. Got to get them before the bones develop fully. Yeah, I'm trying to put everything in his left hand so he's a lefty, like his old man. You know? Do you, yeah, will you be disappointed if he's not a lefty? No, I don't care. Okay. All right. The number one thing I feel like about parenting is the more you try and force something, the more it goes the other way. Really? Strict parents always have the wildest childs, childs, yeah. children, <clears throat> yeah. you know? Yeah, I guess that's the truth. So you're just not going to be a strict parent. You're going to do the... No, uh, I just have no expectations. That's good. Set the bar low and then... <laughs> Well, maybe he'll crawl right under it, you know? Yeah, that would be... That's good. Nice, I like that. Yeah, you see what I did there? Oh, there it is, folks. Now you know why he's the best Uh, in the biz. We found it there eventually. And I do also have to say it's our last podcast here at... Toad Lake Store. And this is just a fantastic place. If you you get over this neck of the woods, folks, great beer signs. Yes, they are neon. Um, a whole wall of taps that are out of commission. That's what I like when they retire the taps, <laughs> you know. It's they put just, how many kegs went through it. Yeah, you know, yeah, like give a, it its number, its yeah. notch. It's a beautiful spot here. Come on over here. Check out uh, check out the fish on the wall. Check out, uh, put yourself well, a guys, dollar on the wall. Well, guys, thanks for tuning in to you another know, oh, episode. They've got a skull sign on the wall. You don't see that you often. You don't actually see that often. No, yeah. classic signs I here. Like that. Folks, it's been great to have you with here. You know what I mean. Thanks for bellying up to the bar with us. We're clearly at the end of our rope, and, uh, you know, it was nice to climb down it with you here today. So thanks for tuning in, guys, to another episode of Belly Up Podcast. We'll see you next one. And as always, make sure you tip your bartender.